The first scripture that comes to my mind when you ask that question is Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 1. The Bible says that we're surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses. But before that, we jump over to the to the previous chapter, which is chapter 11, and we find out that, that God used certain individuals to move in godly fear. For example, we have Noah, who moved in godly fear and stepped out in faith in action and built an ark. So, I believe there's individuals that are rooting us on, so to speak, that has already been there, done that, and is actually rooting us on because they've been there. Now, you may say, do we have loved ones in heaven that may... Uh, they?" that they, they're up there and they know what we're doing down here. There's, I did a funeral a, a while back, and it was a, a, of a mother that had passed away of cancer and left behind four children and a husband. Now, why would that happen? I don't know why that, that would happen, but let me, let me ask, ask you this. When we get to heaven and we see Jesus face to face, um, and we gaze into his eyes, those eyes of love, because God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. When we see those eyes of love and we gaze into his eyes, I don't think we're too concerned of what's going down down here because we're wrapped, we're wrapped in his presence up there. So I'd just like to leave you with that. Thank you so very much. And I agree with that last statement there for sure. I want Yes, thank you so much for that, uh, for that question. Um, I've been hearing a lot of faith without works is dead, being alone, and that is so true. I remember before I stepped out into full-time ministry, I remember I prayed to the Lord. I said, Lord, I'll go where you want me to go. Lord, I'll do what you want me to do. Yes. I'll say what you want me to say. I'll be what you want me to be. Not my will, but yours be done. Yes. Just tell me to go, Lord, and I'll go. And I heard the Lord say these words, and I'll never, ever forget it. It marked my ministry. He said, son, what happens in your prayer closet needs to leave your prayer closet. I'll move when you move. And now our church is called the Move Church, because for so long I was sitting asking God to do something, but all, in, uh, in, in the big picture of things, God was literally waiting on me to take the first step of faith and do what he wanted me to do personally. Now, God will never deviate from this word. He will always stay true to his word because in him there's no variance nor shadow of turning, and he's not a man that he should lie, but make sure it lines up with the word of God. But know that faith without works is dead, being alone. Because you can sit in your chair and say you got all the faith in the world, but never get off that chair and do something and go for God. Let me encourage you to go for God. God, because I feel that yes. in my spirit. Go for God and do what he's instructed you to do and never, ever, ever quit. Thank you so much. Why was one of the Hebrew bearers killed because he stumbled and touched the ark? Well, let me, let me um, answer that question just like this. Our, our disobedience and lack of instruction um, that, that we do uh, not only affects us, but it affects other people. So uh, sin has consequences, our disobedience has consequences, yes. and that's just what happened. Um, and so also you can look at Adam and Eve. Um, there was consequences there. Sin came into the picture. And the very presence that Adam used to, to walk in, which is the Ruach, the breath of God, yes. the wind of God, he is now hiding from the very presence that he used to dwell in. So uh, let me, I'll just say it like this, our disobedience, to what God has instructed us to do not only affects us, but it also affects the lives of other people. And we can also look at Jonah's life. His disobedience not only affected him, but it affected a nation um, when he was uh, uh, swaddled into a belly of a whale for three days. And so I'll leave you with that. Our disobedience not only affects us, but it also affects the lives of other people. And you can also later, you can find it in 2 Samuel chapter 6 and starting with verse 1. Noah also was di given divine instructions to build an ark. Somebody that was, was good with instructions was Noah. I mean, one centimeter off, um, that thing would tip over. <laughs> so Noah was good with instructions. God gave him divine instructions, and he was obedient, and he followed those instructions. So when God speaks to us, we need to listen, and we also need to obey.
Thank you. So, no, what does the Bible say about transgenders? Well, it, the, the Bible says that, let's, let's go here. We'll start in the Bible, stay in the Bible, and end in the Bible. <laughs> That's good. And that's, a, that's, a, that's the right thing to do, is to start in the Bible, stay in the Bible, and end in the Bible. Thank you so much, Pastor. Well, if you can, uh, the first marriage instituted was in Genesis chapter 2 and verse 22 to 23. And so I'm going to read that to you. It says, Then the Lord God formed woman from the rib, then had taken out of the man, and he brought her to the man. The man said, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman, for she was taken out of man. This is why a man leaves his father and mother, and the two are united to his wife, and they become one flesh. So the definition of transgender is not in the Bible. The definition of marriage is in the Bible, and that's between one man and one woman. And so also, why would you want to alter the way God had made you and designed you from your mother's womb? The Bible says in, in Jeremiah chapter 1 and verse 5, it says, Before I knew you in your mother's womb, I formed you and I knit you together. And so I'll just leave you with that.